What about the children? Is there a way to raise them like mentally healthy? Um, yes. They need a lot of attention because they've only got you. You've got your whole life, but they've really only got you. And they need an, a bond and an attachment that they feel secure about. And so um, suppose you've got a load of work to get on with, you've got to do all the invoices. You're working from home and you've got your three-year-old there. And the three-year-old goes, play with me. And you go, I'll play with you when I've done my work. Have you done your work yet? Have you done your work yet? Is it done yet? You'll never get anything done. Because what the kid is saying is, I just want to test our relationship to see if I feel safe with you. But they don't say that, they say, play with me. So the most expedient way of getting those invoice typed is to get on the floor with your child and play cars whatever, or dolls or, or talk the toys or whatever it is. Don't talk them that well, you know, when you, when you do the puppet, you know, oh, it's a nice day today. No, he doesn't say that, he says this. And then gradually the child will get wrapped up in their own imagination, which you're not a part of. Gradually they get on what I used to call autopilot. <laughs> and so they feel secure because you're there on the floor with them and you're playing with them. So they feel secure that they've got you. They can very well manage with their own imagination with their game. So then what you do is you very you withdraw right back to the table, right back to the thing, and you keep smiling and looking. And then they get so absorbed in their game that you can type for 40 minutes <laughs> without being interrupted. I learned this the hard way. The other thing that's really, really good is your two-year-old wants to be involved in all your activities. So, Obviously, let him type the invoices for you until he gets <laughs> bored of that, and then you can do them again. The other thing I think is a really good tip is like you want your children to help around the house when they're growing up. You want them to take on the chores they can manage. And they want to do that too, believe it or not, but they want to do that before they're capable of doing that. So they want to empty the dishwasher when they are 14 months old. So they get the, or they want to do the washing up when that's, so let them, get them on a stool, put them in tepid water at the sink, maybe take the sharp knives out or not, depending what sort of parent you are, <laughs> and let them wish around in the water and do it. Or let them take all the dishes out of the dishwasher and put them on the floor. Because then they associate those chores with your approval and love. They are so, you know how children, we, we, we still like playing cards as adults. It's because the child, we were playing cards with our parents when they were little. So we associate the cards with love. It feels like a nice way of connecting. And because I let my daughter empty the dishwasher all over the floor quite a lot, she now um, just empties the dishwasher. You don't have to say empty the dishwasher, she'll do it. I mean, so she should, she's 31. But, um, <laughs> but when she was a teenager, she, she didn't mind doing the chores. Because if you have a fun game with kids when you're changing the sheets on the bed, if you involve them, it takes four or five times as long. But you are saving yourself time in the future because they are learning how to change sheets on a bed. About one in four or one in five of us are super sensitive people. If you think of it in terms of flowers, one in five of us is an orchid mm -hmm. and one in five of us is a dandelion. An orchid, if it has the right soil and the right temperature, will be the most beautiful flower. But if it's not got the right soil and hasn't got the right climate, it dies. It, it just doesn't work. A dandelion can grow in pretty much anywhere. I mean, if you run over it with a steamroller, it's going to die, obviously, but a dandelion will, will thrive in a crack in the pavement and just a bit of rain and just a bit of sunlight. It doesn't need much. Some children are dandelions, some children are orchids. And um, the thing with um, a dandelion, if you give it everything it needs, it's going to be a beautiful dandelion, it's going to be great. But if you just give it a little bit, it will still survive. 
If the orchid doesn't get its needs met, it's going to die. It's going to not work out well. And so when you've got a super sensitive child, it's quite good to get their needs met. So an orchid, you might be able to say, good night, and they go to sleep by themselves. A super sensitive child might want you to lie down with them until they're asleep. And you might think, this is really boring. I want to go and meet my friends downstairs or whatever. But uh, you'll save yourself a lot of time if a child really needs you, if you allow yourself to be used like that. The more you run away from a child, the more insecure they feel. I mean, you can do little tricks like, do you want me to stay with you? And we have no, no tape going because I don't want to listen to the tape um, or the story or whatever. We used to have tapes when my child was a thing. You probably have it on an audible <laughs> book yeah. now or something. So do you want to listen to the story that we've got on this machine? Or do you want me to lie down with you? And they can choose which they have. You know, you can give them choices like that if you really want to go downstairs and have a glass of wine. Um, so it's fine if they're a bit unhappy, you know, some of the time. I'm not saying, but at night time, I think it's really important that they have control over when you go and when you stay. But obviously they won't when you have to go to work or something. But if it's possible, let them have that control because that will make them feel more secure. And if they're more secure, they're more confident. If they're more confident, they're more likely to be mentally well. If they can rely on the world and they can trust the world, they'll grow up more robust than if they feel they can't.